Hey guys, this is Joseph from Joe Concept. How is everything? Um, I just want to encourage you guys to just stay calm and don't panic. I know this will pass. It's just one of those things that I know I'm, I'm definitely sure of will pass. So, but all we just need to do is to play our own part by staying home, avoid contact with people, touching our faces, our eyes, mouths, and all that. So, and then very, very important also wash very often, wash almost every time. And if we do that, I'm very sure that nothing evil will come our way. All right. So now that we're home, I just thought of going back to the basics and uploading tutorials on tools um, that are in Cinema 4D. So I hope God helps me to continue this. So in this tutorial, we're going to be just more like a quick tip. We're going to look at um, knife tool. So we actually, we have three types of knife in Cinema 4D. And we're going to be looking at those three knives. But today, we're going to look at one of them. Then tomorrow, I'm going to upload another one for the next knife and the next and so on and so forth. So I hope to be fast in this tutorial. And the way I'm going to be talking will be a lot faster. So let's go over to... Cinema 4D. So I have Cinema 4D open here. So I'm going to start with a cube object that I am going to work on. So what I'm going to do is just make this for maybe three by three by three, the segments, then convert this to editable format. So by the way, I'm going to be, I'm using uh, Cinema 4D R21, release 21 here. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because of a friend of mine who talked about who uh, requested that I do a tutorial about knife tool. So he said from R17 downwards, the two so are more intuitive and easy to use, but from R18 upwards that he found it a lot hard to use. So I just thought of talking about these tools. All right. So once you have converted this to editable format by hitting C or clicking on this icon, then you want to be in any of the sub object modes. So either point, edge, or polygon. So as soon as you are here, then you right click here, you're going to see all the tools. So what we want to look at, like I said, in these three days, we're going to be looking at these three tools. Um, line cut, plain cut, and low path cut. So, but for today, we're going to be looking at line cut. The shortcut is KK. So if it's either you click here, or you just click on KK, it takes you to the same tool. So I'll look at these options and I'm sure by the time we look at this option, we are going to really understand how to use this tool. So I'm going to pick those things that I use most often. So the first one is we have a uh, visible only. So what this visible only does, if you notice it's checked by default, what happens with visible only is that I it's only cuts whatever I'm seeing that is visible to my screen. So if I press escape, I have cut this. If I go to the back, you notice nothing happens because I'm only cutting along my visible, um, what is visible to me rather. So that is what this visible only does. So that is very simple, not hard to understand. Then notice the next one is slice mode. This slice mode is grayed out. The reason why it's grayed out is because the visible only is checked. So for me to release this, I have to uncheck this visible only for the slice mode to come up. So what this means now is that for slice mode, every options here in this slice mode are used when you're cutting and also cut through. So not is it's not doesn't really work for whatever is visible to you. So what that means is that if I cut here, if I click here now and cut up to this place and escape, you will think that I've cut here, but if I orbit you notice that I've also cut through here. So that means this is not cutting what is only visible to my screen. It's also cutting through to the end. So that is what this. So now this one has options. I think we're going to get rid of this grid. It's distracting me. So I'll go to um, filter, then grid. So I'm fine. So what this slice mode does is it has different options. So the first option is cut. So which is what you've seen. It only cut this object in two parts and nothing more it just cuts and i'm going to do this cut another cut here so you see the difference between this and the next one splits 
So when you use the cut option, what happens is that it cuts this object in two. So I'm going to undo. So we're back with this. So I'm, I want to be in this view and cut. So if I just click from this edge, click and hold down shift to straighten this click and that cut, press escape. And that cuts through. Don't forget, once visible only is off, it cuts through. So what cut through does, cut option does, is just cut this object, but then the point is still fixed, it's still joined. So if I go to move and select this point and move, it's still one point, all right? So that is very important for you to understand. That is what cut does. But we now have another option. If I press KK to go back to my knife tool, I have split. So what split does is that it cuts this thing through. Then after cutting through, it splits them in halves in, or in two. So if I click here, hold down shift and cut, press escape. It does similar things that cut did. But now the difference with this now is that don't forget I use split for this. If I go to move and I select this, notice that it splits this guy in two. So I now have open. So if I do this, I have that. So that's the difference between cut and split. So when you use split, it cuts this guy and split them in half or in two so that they are not joined together. So what these two points are not um, joined together. So you can easily pick one point and move on. So if this is, if you have intention of cutting an object and splitting it in, in half, then you can use this option. So we now have KK again to take me back. We now have this next one, which is um, remove part A. So this remove part A and remove part B, they do similar things. The difference is just um, how you use your knife tool. So you will see in a bit. So if I go to remove part A, so what remove part A does is that it cuts this object and deletes one part of the object. All right. So don't forget now, this is now one object. You know, we've already split this guy in half. So this is where this end point. So if, I, if I'm to use UF now for fill selection and go to my uh, polygon mode, notice it only fills this. It doesn't see them as um, one object anymore, even though they are part of one object. It sees this as one segment of this object and another connected segment. So what this... um remove part does is that it works with only one connected segment of an object so what it does is once you use this it deletes half of it remove it out and leave the other half all right so if i do this and i click somewhere here hold down shift and click notice what happens it, it removes this part of this segment and leaves this part all right okay so it removes this i think i have this um selection on that is why so if i'm going to deselect everything and go to my point mode and kk again and let's try that again so if i click hold down shift click notice what happens it deletes this part and leaves this part so what if this is the part that i want to delete how do i do that then that is where the direction comes in handy so if i click from down notice clicking from up up and coming down delete this part. So if you want to delete this part, you undo, you click from down, go up, then this part is deleted. All right. So that is just what the, that's just what is, um, what the remove part A does. And also similar with remove part B. So if I change this to remove part B and do similar things and delete this part. So if I want to change the direction, just change the direction of your cut, and that does that. Okay. So we have that. Then we also have our single line. So I'm going to go back to visible only. We have our single line. So what single line does is that, notice if we use normal cuts, notice that it tells me to continue cutting until I'm okay. If I'm okay, now press escape, all right? But what single line does is that it cuts one at a time. So if I have my single line on and I click from here to here, stops and tell, and tell me to start all over again so I can from here to here it stops from here to here it stops so, so that's what single line does and also I needed to also notice I'm undoing some of this command so that you can have this notice as soon as your single line 
is active, you have your infinite cut also active. So what does that infinite cut, what does it do? So what infinite cut does is that single line, if I click from here to here, it tells me to continue or I want to continue over. But if I have my infinite cut active, what will happen with infinite cut is that, oh, sorry, escape, select everything okay, okay what happens with infinite cut is that if i click from here and end anywhere here the cut goes infinitely so it doesn't tell me to continue it just cuts through uh, you have that so if i let's say for instance i want to cut upwards i'll just click from here stop here it cuts through okay so that's what this does then this restriction to sorry restrict to selection is useful when you want to cut, do an infinite cut or any kind of cut, but you don't want to go past the selection. And that is more useful in your polygon selection. So if you have a polygon selection and have a selection, let's say this selection, and I want to cut, but I don't want this cut. Okay, let me just see selection from here so you can see. I want to cut this guy up to this place, but I don't want it to continue here. I want to have a diagonal cut, or I want to have a straight cut, but I don't want it to get here. And if I use my KK, and I do infinite cuts, possibly from here to here, and make sure my restrict select, okay, let's not have this active. So if I click, notice what happens, it cuts through. And I don't want that. I don't want this the cuts to pass the selection. So what I will do is activate this guy, then if I click from here to here, it cuts and stops here. So this um, blue line you're having is because more of my cone size is on. So it's showing me that I have more than four faces here. So I need to close. So it's looking for the closest line. So, so that is not. So that is what this does. Then we have our select cut. Um, I haven't really used this. So let's see if I click from here to here and press escape. I don't really see, so I have not really used this. So I'm going to be talking about those things that I've used. Then you also have your auto snap. So I'm going to um, get rid of some of these things. So if I go to your auto snap, notice if I cut, let me go out of my infinite cuts. If I try to cut, notice what is happening. That my face is highlighted, my polygon is highlighted. If I go to the Edge. Edge is also highlighted if I go to point. Vertex is also highlighted. And this functionality is because the auto snap is on. If I get this out, notice nothing is highlighted. But that doesn't mean you can't cut from there. So if I want to cut from this point, I can click, you cut. But the good thing with this is that you, I, I would want you to always have this because if you come here now and you try to click, you think that this point is selected. If you zoom in, you notice that. So that is why you need to have your auto snap on. So you can snap to whatever point you want and you are rest assured that it snaps there. All right. Okay, so the next one is you also have your angle constraint. So what this angle constraint does is that it constrains your cuts to an angle. So let's say for instance, I want to cut this guy angle 45 so I'll go to let's say for instance top view I want to cut this guy angle 45 so I have to have this on because right now it's not on even though it is 45 I click I'm going everywhere but if I want this to go exactly at angle 45 I can just activate this so if I click here notice I can only go horizontally vertically or at that angle 45 I can't come towards the side all right, so let's say I want to go, I'll go 30, click and go 30, then this goes 30 here and here. So you can actually use this for a particular cut. Maybe you, you are working to precision and you want to cut at particular angle. Then you have your real time. So I'll go back to perspective mode view. You now have your real time also. So what this real time does if I get rid of this? By default, real time is on, and the reason is because 
if I get rid of this angle line cut and I click from here to here, notice what is happening. I'm having the cut and in real time. If I press escape, I have that. Well, if I deactivate this real time undo and I click from here to here. So um doesn't really give me what I'm looking for. So I think um this doesn't really do anything. I don't think I think if if please if you know what this does, please I would I wouldn't mind if you can share because having the real time and on and not active does similar things. So I wouldn't know. All right. So I think by now you should have known how this thing works. So if you have a particular project and you have a mind of what you are going for, you can actually use this knife tool to do that. So let's say, for instance, I want to have this cut somewhere here. I want to have a cut inside this polygon. Then you can also use um, visible only. You can actually use this and just cut. So if I, for instance, cut from here, and if you want this um, somewhere here, you want to also intersect this so that you can then later get rid of that. If I click from here to here, 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 and back, notice what we have. So we have this cut. Then you, now I'm not having a lot of issues here that why I have this too many edges. So a way for me to solve this is to try and create a polygon. So the good thing for me now is that this is helping me out by showing me that, okay, there is a problem here. So I we need to come from here to here, get through to this place. So this is giving me another issue. So I would have to follow the loop for me to solve that problem until that is over. So if I click here up to this place, I'm still also going to have an issue. So closing this loop solves this problem here. Then I also have another issue here. The reason why I have this issue is because this face now has how many edges? One, two, three, four, five. So meaning I need to click from here and end here. Then this solves this problem. So I need to come back to this place and also solve this issue. So I'll click from here to this place here until this guy is solved. So that is a, a good practice if you want to work with. Oh, sorry, I'll do that on this edge. So from here to here. So that is just good practice. So you also notice this, we also have an issue here. So that means I need to join this here until I follow the loop and solve that problem. So I, this is just trying to work with um, real life project that you would find yourself having. So for me to finish up, I have to just do this loop around. So I think you get the idea that's how to solve this problem. So if you feel this was helpful, please do. Okay, now in this period, uh, let me not say that. Just once more, do take care of yourselves and please, for God's sake, just be clean and avoid contact. Stay at home and learn a lot. I've started, I've decided to learn a lot also in this period. So we could all learn together. So do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.